Hi folks, welcome to uh, chapter number 6, lecture 4 and on the whole it is uh, 21st lecture in our uh, series. In the last lecture we, I talked about the pre big down phenomenon in solid and liquid dielectrics. It is uh, the current through the solid dielectrics are before the breakdown are slightly higher in magnitude. You can imagine solid dielectrics have the epsilon r, uh, the relative permittivity to be higher, unlike the gases, what we have talked about. So the capacitance formed by the solid and liquid dielectrics is higher and uh, you can imagine there will be more of current through the dielectric when uh, epsilon r is higher so uh, and we also discussed that um, the pre breakdown process uh, like in gases dielectrics in solids and liquids also is field dependent that means it is different in uh, different uh, configurations of the electric field. We learn about it and uh, of, of course it depends upon the quality of the dielectric, the dielectric itself, the condition of the dielectric, the heat transportation uh, capability of the dielectric, etc. So, uh, as we had uh, learned in the case of uh, gaseous dielectrics, in solid dielectrics also, as you can see here, a, a typical configuration of uh, uh, schematic of the typical, con uh, configure, typical characteristic of current with increasing voltage in the solid dielectrics. It is just like the one we learned also in the case of gaseous dielectrics. Figure 8 we will try to uh, learn. It shows that the current varies proportionally to the voltage in the region 1. Let's uh, talk about first in the region 1. The current varies proportionally to the applied voltage and this region 1 is called the ohmic behavior. So if the ohmic resistance caused by the dielectric is constant as you increase the voltage uh, it uh, follows the Ohm's law and the conduction current increases almost as you can see it is a straight line but something different happens when you increase the voltage further. On raising the applied voltage, hence of obviously the electric field intensity, the ionic conduction current, as I mentioned in liquids and solids, it is not electronic conduction current, it is ionic conduction current, uh, gets saturated, it, it goes through a process of getting saturation and that is depicted by the region 2, the flattening of the schematic drawn here and then when you increase the voltage further, obviously the magnitude of the current would increase and there will be a uh, instant when you have increased the uh, voltage very high as here in this region the indefinite growth in the conduction current takes place which is required for the breakdown to take place. So this is uh, almost the same but here we will see uh, the magnitudes of the current are higher. The actual uh, measurement uh, have taken place later. So in figure 9, you see 
the actual measurement and the measurement has been done here for extremely non-uniform field configuration because you know the more is the field uh, non-uniform the higher will be the electric field intensity at the tip of the needle electrode and higher is the electric field intensity more will be the current conduction current so this has been drawn for uh, two um, dielectrics one the transformer oil and the dark characteristic is for liquid nitrogen this is for liquid nitrogen and for the transformer oil the curvature of the tip of the needle in the up uh, for the upper characteristic it is our needle has 10 micrometer curvature here and the lower one is uh, 25 mi micrometer you can imagine when the curvature is higher the field intensity applied would uh, at the same voltage the field intensity would be less for higher curvature and for a smaller curvature at the same voltage the field intensity at the tip of the electrode in the dielectric will be more so you see the characteristic here what do you when you compare the two characteristics i hope you are able to appreciate the similarity the same in the initial uh, uh, level of voltage application here as you see almost a, a straight line more or less a straight line you can say that, that is ohmic region of the conduction current and then it has a small uh, region where a saturation kind of a thing is taking place here and then as you increase the voltage the conduction current increases considerably now you must also appreciate this is 10 to the power of 6 amperes that means micro ampere current and below there the magnitude of the current as you can see is much much less 10 to the power of you know, 10 and 10 to the power of 11 it is beginning with so 10 to the power of 10 is less than a nano ampere of current very small current so the measurement techniques have improved that you can measure such small currents also so this is how um, the uh, yeah this has been measured for uh, a constant gap distance of 4 millimeter between the needle and the plane with increasing voltage and the oil temperature uh, was kept to be 20 degrees centigrade and um, the liquid nitrogen at 77.3 kelvin temperature so this is uh, how the, the conduction currents uh, vary the this was also uh, tried to be uh, given the explanation in uh, analytically and uh, according to the Van Toff uh, Van Toff's law the conductivity kappa we have learned within a certain range of temperature follows the relation uh, kappa naught uh, kappa is equal to k naught mind it this is k naught and k naught uh, is a constant not kappa naught this is not kappa uh, sorry this is k k naught is um, 
uh, as you when you write, there is not much of difference between kappa and k. So this should be k, not a constant, and f is also constant. Kappa is the conductivity. Small k here is the uh, Bolt, uh, Boltzmann uh, constant, and uh, uh, t is the temperature. In uh, uh, t is the temperature in uh, Kelvin, and the conductivity is given in kilocalories per mole. So this is uh, what is uh, tried uh, to be given, uh, where K is Boltzmann's constant, T absolute temperature, and uh, K naught is the uh, and F are the material constants. F is known as activation energy of the material and it is expressed in kilocalorie per mole. Venthoff's law is valid only in the region when the conduction current follows the ohmic behavior. That means the region 1 in the previous uh, uh, slide and in this region also you can say only initially. So these things uh, could not, I mean the theoretically, analytically the condition at which the breakdown takes place, the development of current could not be so well expressed. So long the conduction was following the Ohm's law, this um, equation is valid. Now, uh, variation in transformer oil conductivity was measured with positive polarity voltage for a wide range of temperature for different moisture contents as illustrated in this figure. See, the, the conductivity is given here as you can see in you know, Siemens per centimeter you can say and uh, uh, this is uh, of the order of as you see here it is of the order of 10 to the power of um, 15 so such low uh, value of the current 5000 I mean it is calibrated here this way and uh, then uh, this is the current and this uh, axis is telling this has been calibrated in degree centigrade the temperature of the uh, sample of oil in degree centigrade and as you can see here the uh, temperature here is given with respect to the reciprocal of absolute temperature this axis here is in Kelvin, reciprocal of the absolute temperature it has been measured for different moisture content in parts per million between 3, uh, for 3, 20, 24 and 180 um, parts per million. As you can see here that the conductivity varies in a very typical fashion. For the conductivity current is, uh, is as you can say, the uh, this is here uh, for the uh, the fourth uh, characteristic four is for 180 ppm. The highest content of the moisture is uh, shown by the characteristic 4 and as you can see the conductivity is high that means more current would flow through before the breakdown or so long you have applied the voltage the dielectric the, the transformer oil would draw more current if the uh, moisture content is high to that order and when you reduce 
the moisture content, the characteristic one and two, as you can see, almost equal. That is uh, three and twenty ppm is uh, this lower most characteristic, and in between is the characteristic number three for forty four ppm. This kind of measurements, these are actual measurements, and these kind of measurement are revealing the these tell the condition of the dielectric. Uh, when you are, uh, when you could say, when the temperature is changing, when the moisture content is changing, that means the quality of the dielectric or the, of the oil is changing. As, as you can see, this has been measured here for minus 20, beginning with minus 20 degrees centigrade and increased till up to almost the measurements have been made up to also almost 90 degrees centigrade. It's a big variation of the temperature of the sample of oil. And this is how the conduction currents vary. In, in these uh, measurements, people have not tried to measure the current up to the breakdown. These are measured at much lower uh, voltage and uh, and yeah the, in this uh, fi uh, figure as you can see a uh, at uh, at uh, contents yeah Let's, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, as you can see it here, the uh, requirement of uh, time when you uh, apply uh, the voltage on liquid or solid, the breakdown does not occur instantaneously. It may occur instantaneously if you apply right in the beginning very high voltage. But when you increase the voltage gradually, the breakdown may take considerable time. This kind of an explanation was given by a colleague of mine, Dr. Pilling. As you see, some schematics have been drawn here uh, showing the requirement of time for breakdown in liquids and solids. The uh, figure says the development of breakdown in extremely and weakly non-uniform fields. This is, you can imagine, you can understand very well, between needle and plane, the uh, configuration, field configuration is uh, extremely non-uniform and this is between a sphere and plane, the gap distance is not very large as, as you can see, the field formation is within the weakly non-uniform field uh, in, this, uh, in the second case. Let's discuss the condition for needle plane electrode system. The uh, the, in the uh, epsilon r could be uh, liquid or solid. So when you apply uh, some voltage, uh, and maybe you, you could apply a uh, constant voltage and wait for the development to take place. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, Initially, nothing will happen in the dialect. And then uh, what happens? It's some phenomenon at the tip of the needle electrode would begin. Why there? 
because the field in the intensity of field <coughs> applied to the dielectric is highest at the tip of the electrode. Initially, nothing will happen. Let's uh, uh, take this for uh, this uh, happening. Let's consider for solid dielectric. Nothing will happen initially. After some time, there may be some beginning of formation of breakdown channel at the tip of the electrode that you see in the second schematic here. After some time, there will be a beginning of some breakdown channel formation at the tip of the electrode that is where the highest field intensity is, exists. Let's call that time to be TCHA. That means the channel appearance. When you continue with the voltage, the formation of the channel would extend because whenever, what, what is this uh, channel formation? Why should it be there? It is because of the partial breakdown activity at the tip of the electrode that is at the location of the highest field intensity. We have learned in the case of gases dielectrics, we have called it to be corona. Here in solid dielectric, we would not call it to be corona. It is called internal partial breakdown or local partial breakdown activity within the solid dielectric. That begins and when it begins, it will obviously decompose the solid dielectric. And there will be a kind of a deterioration in the solid dielectric. Uh, a, a, a a decomposition of the solid dielectric material would take place and that may give rise to gases gases and obviously conductive channel these channels formed are permanent in the dielectric unlike the streamer in the air because the air gets replaced and the streamer channel wave and they are not permanent they, they, they wave there they are formed again in the uh, in case of uh, gaseous dielectric but here in solid dielectric nothing is changing so once the, the conductive channel is formed it is permanent there so that formation of permanent conductive channel grows over the time and this phenomenon what we call it to be the uh, treeing phenomenon treeing is nothing but a degradation in the quality of the dielectric because of partial breakdown activity within the dielectric so a treeing phenomenon takes place because of the degradation of the uh, solid dielectric process and it leaves behind a permanent channel formation hmm? as you see it here. Now this permanent channel formation uh, is a conductive path. So this extends itself to, towards the opposite electrode, towards the ground. And when it acquires a, a certain depth within the solid dielectric, as you see in the last figure, it will uh, make a short circuit. That is a global breakdown between the uh, tip of the electrode, uh, needle electrode and the ground electrode. So, 
and in the solid dielectric you if uh, this is achieved um, complete breakdown is achieved you may see a complete breakdown channel as well as the partial breakdown channel that is the treeing process you may see there so uh, uh, let's uh, see uh, the development of this type of partial breakdown treeing process in a solid dielectric here let's see in the next figure yeah this is the development in in extremely non uniform field you can say the total time required for breakdown is the sum total of the appearance time required for appearance of the um, of of the breakdown channel and the after that the time required for accomplishing the complete breakdown this tch a may be very very long even tch d i mean the development of the channel may be also very long both these may be uh, time required may be very long uh, distributed you can say divided the total time required for breakdown may be divided and it depends upon condition to condition of the dielectric it depends upon the dielectric itself and this kind of uh, action can take place we will see a next slide here see uh try to appreciate this this is these are the conducting channels without formation of global breakdown channel this has to be achieved with great precaution and techniques applied this is a acrylic uh, solid dielectric has been a block of uh, acrylic solid dielectric has been chosen here and a, uh, this is the tip of the electrode you could say here and the voltage is applied uh, here a pulse voltage is applied here which has got the voltage applied has got you can say uh, a millisecond duration not continuous uh, duration and this uh, breakdown channel uh, gets formed uh, i mean the treeing phenomenon develops very fast because the magnitude of the voltage applied has been chosen in such a way that it gives rise to a permanent uh, breakdown channel formation of permanent breakdown channels treeing within the dial and this uh, the two uh, figures here would depend upon the uh, the curve radius of curvature of the needle the two formation two kinds of treeing phenomenon as you can see on the left and the right two kinds of the treeing uh, phenomenon you would uh, you can produce in the solid dielectric is it not the same way as we have uh, seen a photograph in case of gaseous dielectrics taken by lemke if you go back to earlier lectures similar pattern of the streamer breakdown or streamer corona has been observed in gaseous dielectrics and in solid dielectrics it would be a permanent channel and a tremendous similarity in the development of breakdown channel takes place here and if you uh, will go, go next in case of liquid dielectrics again a similar pattern of the growth of streamer channels or uh, you can say treeing process in the liquid dielectrics can also be observed so there is a similarity in the partial breakdown breakdown process 
taking place within all the dielectrics like p cas is solid or liquid i would like to show you this here this uh, block on the right has been taken here the photograph on the of the block on the right as you can see it here this is the block whose photograph has been put here on the slide and you see the i am holding uh, the uh, acrylic block it's about uh, less than is about a centimeter uh, deep and uh, you can imagine it is about 6 inches by 4 inches uh, size and on the top here the electrode mark seen here the electrode has been uh, put here and a pulse voltage given which results in for in the formation of such beautiful uh, treeing phenomenon of conductive channels within the solid dielectrics so this uh, i mean this, this one can produce but lot of technique is required i happen to have known the person who has given rise to this uh, uh, hickman as it is written here it, it is the hickman and they have a uh, site you you can visit this site number of uh, uh, creative work they have uh, done in uh, their laboratory and uh, they have uh, they have given me this sample for using for educational purpose so i'm trying to convey to you i hope you appreciate it let's go back to the uh, previous slide once again which we did not discuss yeah as you can see it here the lower uh, schematic drawn by pilling pilling was also a colleague of mine and can you imagine these figures pilling had drawn and to explain the process something like 50 years the knowledge existed even at that time with the hard work in uh, technical university of dresden uh, we worked together myself and pilling the lower as you see schematic shows the process of breakdown over the time between a sphere and a plane and as i explain between the sphere and plane the field formation the uh, configuration of the field formed is that of weakly non uniformed so when you apply a certain magnitude maybe slightly higher magnitude of uh, voltage or the electric field intensity than the actual working uh, field intensity or working voltage for the dielectric and you leave it for some time i have left it for thousands of hours i'll show you what happens so no breakdown in all these three figures first three figures you can see no breakdown chart why because we have learned earlier also that in weakly non uniform fields no partial breakdown activity takes place and that is true even for solid and liquid dielectrics we had learned it for gaseous dielectrics but in solids and liquids also when the field configuration is that of weakly non uniform field no partial breakdown activity takes place yeah it may happen that because of some 
foreign particle in the dielectric the field intensity enhancement takes place that means uh, non uniformity is uh, embedded there inside the solid dielectric and there the partial breakdown activity may take place but if the pure dielectric is there no inclusions are there no partial breakdown activity would take place ultimately of over a time when it is lived its life you can say the dielectric and withstood the high magnitude of field intensity applied to it it will one day or other after thousands of hours of working aging would take place and it will lead to complete breakdown so uh, in the b schematic b breakdown in weakly non uniform field takes place without partial breakdown activity there so uh, and uh, the partial breakdown activity had given rise to freeing phenomenon and extension of the freeing phenomenon led to breakdown in extremely non uniform field and unlike there in weakly non uniform field no pv and the breakdown takes place directly as you can see uh, in this schematic and most interesting part is yeah as it is explained here that uh, in uh, in this case uh, tcha is very large tcha the time required for the development of the uh, breakdown channel is very large and uh, tch uh, uh, tch sorry uh, the tch a is very long the appearance appearance of the uh, breakdown channel is very large and once there is uh, appearance of the breakdown channel as you can see it here once once the breakdown channel appears the uh, tchd is very very uh, small that is almost equal to zero you can say tchd this tchd is almost equal to zero but appearance of the breakdown channel may appear after very long time and there is you can say in, in this case uh, uh, the total time required is e uh, for the breakdown is equal to tcha because tchd is almost equal to zero and one such uh, figure actually measured you can see this was for extremely non uniform field this is here for weakly non uniform this i measured it and uh, when experimenting with uh, weakly non uniform field solid dielectrics in power cables uh, this is a photograph of a breakdown channel in weakly non uniform field in a 20 kv rated voltage uh, coaxial polyethylene cable uh, this was taken by me and a clean breakdown channel appears to have developed abruptly because you don't see any treeing process between the two electrodes in fact this is the conductor and over the conductor this is your uh, semiconductive uh, layer that's the typical construction of power cables and oh, this is the dielectric polyethylene and this is once again a semiconductive layer over the dielectric so the dielectric uh, is uh, below the dielectric and above the dielectric is the uh, semiconductive layer uh, they are working like an electrode you could say and the breakdown channel takes place between the two semiconductive layers without going through any partial breakdown process or development of 
freeing process, you see a straightforward breakdown channel between the two semiconductive layers of the uh, power cable through the dielectric. Uh, so this is so typical uh, was explained by Pilling and now we have seen the actual process in actual dielectrics one can produce and it, it does happen. In this case also um, the very difficult to obtain such kind of a clean breakdown channel through the dielectric. This, uh, the uh, depth of the dielectric is something around uh, six, uh, uh, six millimeter. Why it is very difficult? If the instant complete breakdown takes place, the power supply is not tripped the uh, breakdown channel would uh, give rise with would facilitate large amount of current to flow through this channel and as soon as very large amount of current is able to flow through this breakdown channel the whole thing would burn out so the uh, these experiments are performed with very sensitive uh, uh, tripping devices so that as soon as the complete channel is formed the voltage applied has been taken away. So this uh, uh, these two uh, explanations uh, reveal are revealing in the sense that you have um, the same kind of phenomenon taking place in solids and liquids as in the case of gaseous dielectrics. That is the effect of field configuration, the effect of extremely non-uniform and weakly non-uniform field. One doesn't experiment with the uniform fields because you know the uniform field is only ideal condition. It does not actually exist in practice. In, as I have been mentioning, in the gas insulated systems, the in the power cables, in uh, so many gadgets, it is tried to develop. Um, it is tried to work only with weakly non-uniform fields. Whereas, uh, in case of uh, many uh, in case of many. Uh, 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 installations, for example, in trans transmission lines and everything, extremely non-uniform field exists. So both these fields are in the power system available. So uh, we close for today the uh, our lecture, and we will uh, as. We'll talk about partial breakdown phenomenon in the next lecture.